Well, I, I walked into Florida, and what, what had happened was they got a big fat guy called the American Dream. If you want to know it, he knew less about Roslyn than I did. But he was the big star, and they had the my man there called Eddie Graham. He heard me interview one time. He said, you're going to be my main event. He said, who I'm going to wrestle? Dusty Rhodes. I said, is that right? I said, well, you know I can't get beat down here in Florida. He said, all right, well, you won't. Twelve weeks went by, and I said, what are we doing, Eddie? He said, what do you mean? I said, we went 12 weeks. I went 45 minutes every night. I'm tired. He said, did you lose a match? I said, I haven't lost one yet. He said, well, I kept my word to you. But me and Dusty Rhodes, it was like Dusty Rhodes had actually been in the, you know, people get tired of wrestlers real, real fast. They see someone in the main event for 10 times. They want to see somebody else. They want that belt chain. You know, Vince changes the belts around. You never know who the champion is. But in them days, if you owned the territory, you kept the belt, right? Well, Dusty Rhodes had the belt about seven years. He actually wanted to leave Florida. And like my super brain, I went down and bought a giant bus ticket. I said, Dusty Rhodes, Florida belongs there. Here's a bus ticket. Either come out and get an ass beaten or get out of Florida, here's the bus ticket. So Dusty Rhodes stayed night after night. We went 30, 40, 45 minutes. And then Dusty, in them days, loved to cut his head open. I wasn't real for it, but we cut our head open every night. We went 8, 9, 10, 11 weeks. And finally the promoter said, well, I don't know if the people are getting tired of you. I said, well, they're still coming to the matches. He said, he said yes, but he said, I got... Big Ernie Ladd wants to come in. I got Don Morocco. I got three or four guys coming in. He said, why don't you leave for a while and come back? I said, well, that's what you want. I mean, if that, you're the boss. I always did what the boss told me to do. If I thought it was wrong, I still did it. So we worked a loser leave town. He put another guy in my place. They didn't sell out for another year. They finally called me. Would you come back? And I said, no, I, I had left. When I shouldn't have left, I don't want to come back. And so I left Florida. It was my greatest stay. I had 12 great weeks, and it was 12 weeks of sellout. And I often said to a lot of people, I wonder what would have happened if Box Baker would have won one match. Never won one match, and we kept coming back. We had barbed wire matches. We invented electric match electric fence around. We worked, the loser had to be carried back to the dressing room on a stretcher. I had a match where I took 50 gallons of boiling hot water, put it inside the ring. I said, if he pins me tonight, I'll sit in that boiling hot water five minutes, right? And I had to throw meat in there and all that there. Of course, I didn't get into the hot water. I, you have to, when you get to the big time, you got to come up with them ideas. Because the one thing that all promoters hate, they've hated it since 1964. I think a promoter told me, he said, don't come into my dressing room and say, what do you want me to do tonight? I used to come in the dressing room and I'd say, hey, this is what gets Ox Baker over. I want to get disqualified tonight. But Ox, this guy's a jibroni. He ain't won a match. Well, he's going to win one tonight because I'm going to beat him. And beat him, knock the referee down, beat him some more. You're going to disqualify me and raise that guy's hand on the floor. They said, that'll work because I'll say, the whole organization is against me. The whole world is against me. And I tell new one thing about the independence, just talking back to them, you have to have ideas. You have to sit down, what can we do different tonight that we didn't do the night before? And I want you to know another thing that Ox Baker did for 40 years. I got nine teeth knocked out. I got 50 cans upside the head. I got 23 stitches in the back of my head from fans. In 40 some years, I never hit one fan, never pushed a fan. The referee, I used to get in their face. If you check my record, never touch the referee. Nowadays, guys get the referee, we're gonna work there in anger with the referee. The referee's gotta do his part. He's gotta learn to count up to four or five, whatever the count is. That's what he has to do. He can't be part of the match and get slammed. Right? Nowadays, even Vince has a referee knocked down and then revived. Right? I don't, I don't, I've never had believe, I still don't believe it. And every time someone's gonna use a referee, I said, you don't need me in that kind of a match. The referee has to be the authority. What he says, he's gonna fine you some money for doing this or that. 
And you can get up in his face. I'm not saying get up in his face. Yell at him. Because I like to raise my voice. A lot of times I like to whisper, but generally I like to raise my voice. So they hear what I'm saying, because I don't want anybody to mistake, did he say that or he didn't say that? And like I said, that was a great time in Florida. I got a call from Australia at the time. I got a call from Singapore, South Africa. They wanted me to come over there and do the same thing. And I have regretted that I never went back, but I had my time. You know, you only get one, like, killer... I got a tear in my eye when I think of Mikhailo Kowalski. 60 years he's in the business. He's no longer with us anymore. We go one, through this life one time, and we better get it the right way. We better do what we... We have a little fun out there, you know. And I love to see the guys come back to the dressing room and they shake each other's hand. They put on a hell of a match. Even they even put a social... They love what they're doing. And if I didn't love it, I wouldn't have lasted over 40 years. Is that right? You got another question, right? Yeah, 